right, so today we're going to be doing a demonstration for giving sub-Q fluids to your pet. Um, so typically um, you'll be sent home with a bag of fluids, a line for the fluid, and then um, new needles. And so when um, you receive your um, sub-Q package, you'll have these guys. And so um, we'll start with our bag. So typically will be a little notch where you can tear it. So we'll go ahead and open that right down the side. And then we'll pull out like that. And then this is just trash, so we don't need to worry about that. And then along with that, we'll also go ahead and open our line. There's typically a little dotted notch um, you can tear as well. And again, these are all, it's just trash, so we don't have to worry about that. And so here's our line. Sometimes you may have a little tab, um, a little paper tab to hold the fluid together. That um, is also something we don't need to be worried about. And so when you have your fluids um, in the line, there's going to be um, a little needle. Um, it's going to be a large needle, actually. It's going to be capped. Um, with this part, we want to keep it sterile. And then this is going to go into where this blue port is. So you're going to want to remove this blue piece, and it's going to come straight up and out. And so this area, we're going to want to keep it sterile, so be careful not to touch it. And on your line, this cap will come right off as well. Now this is a sharp end, so you do want to handle that with care um, so we don't injure ourselves. And the way that this is going to hook up, you're going to insert it straight into the port. And you do want to keep it straight because if you um, hold it at an angle, it can puncture out the side. So we do want to avoid that. And so just feed that in as much as it'll let you. And then at this point, what you're going to want to do, um, it's a good idea to have a trash can nearby um, or something to kind of catch it because the fluid will run out. Um, and at this point, fluids um, all are clamped, so we have a few ports. So you may have a blue port like this where it's open, and then if you push the line to the other side, it will be closed. Or you may have one like this, or sometimes you could have both. And so when the dial is at the top, it's open, and to close this clamp, you just roll it all the way down, and this will prevent any fluid from moving down the line. So typically, I'll just go ahead and open both of them. And then when you hold your back upright, gravity should help the fluid start to come down, and you'll see it fill in this port. And you may even notice some air bubbles coming through. Um, in the case of subcute fluids, you don't need to worry about air bubbles under the skin, and so you can just um, either let them evacuate the line. Um, if there's some air that gets under the skin, it's not very detrimental. We don't need to be worried. And so I'll go ahead and close off this port so we don't have too much water dripping. And then on your, um, the end of your line, you're going to have this little port here. And so this can just twist right off. And then with this end, we also want to keep that sterile, so um, avoid touching it, avoid letting it hit the floor, anything like that. Um, we'll supply needles, and so with the needle, there's going to be a little plastic cap. You can simply twist it and pull it right off, and the needle should easily twist onto the port, like so. All right, so for our sub -Q fluid demonstration, we have our lovely assistant River here today. Um, it's always helpful to have a second person to help you know, hold the pet and give them reinsurance as well as treats for positive reinforcement. Um, so we have Maddie's, um, who is River's mom, and she has a peanut butter board. Um, so essentially just a cutting board, we spread a few tablespoons of peanut butter into a thin layer um, so he can have a nice treat to enjoy and as a reward for his uh, patients. So now that we have our fluid line um, all hooked up, we have our bag, our line, and a fresh needle. Um, and I typically keep one of my clamps closed. I would do the blue one. And so when we find a location to give the fluids, um, again, I typically like to do it along the back of the shoulder blades. That's where you're going to have the most amount of skin to work with. Um, and depending on the amount of fluids that you give, you, you know, may want to go here um, just because it'll hold more. And so when we insert the needle, we're going to want to keep it parallel with the skin um, just to make sure that we are under the skin rather than going into the muscle. And so what you'll do is you'll find a nice area of loose skin and I usually will pinch it with my um, middle finger and thumb just to kind of see how it feels. Um, and so this is a good spot. Um, I like to make what we call a skin tent. And then I'll take my pointer finger and find what's called the door of the tent. And essentially, this is where we're going to insert the needle. And so I'll just carefully remove my needle cap. All right. And then I'll find my skin tent, find my door, and then insert my needle parallel. And it, um, something I like to do because with fluids we use a large needle, I'll pinch the skin right before I poke and then this helps um, kind of reduce that um, any pain or discomfort they may experience. 
And so from here, I typically like to have a second person help hold the needle um, just so it doesn't fall out. Um, and then with the fluid bag, you'll want to hold it upright. So either you can do that or um, if, you're not, if you don't have any, um, a second person, you can hang this on a, um, a coat hanger or if you have a hook on the wall, you can hang it there as well. And we have these markers on the side of the bag. So this is a fresh new bag, so it's one liter, um, but say you need to give 200. And so each line mark is 100. So we'll go from here, we'll go down to the two. So I'll go ahead and make sure all my ports are opened. And then you can simply squeeze the bag. Um, faster is better, because they'll finish quicker and um, you cannot push too hard. So I'll go ahead and give it a nice quick squeeze. And then you should be able to see in the port that the fluid's coming out and filling. Um, typically, we don't want too many air bubbles, um, but if there are a few, we don't need to be worried because air under the skin is not going to cause a whole lot of damage. Um, and so simply squeeze the bag until you've given the proper amount of fluid. And so we'll just give them a little bit for today. Um, and then when you're all done with the necessary volume, you'll want to close your port. And then when you're ready to pull the needle out, um, it'll pull straight out parallel with the body. And I always like to give it a good pinch as I do uh, because some fluid could leak out from the hole that the needle created. And so we'll just pinch it out for a few seconds. You may have a large bubble of fluid. Um, this is totally normal. It will go away over the course of a few hours as the body begins to absorb the liquid. And then of course at the end, you wanna make sure that your pet He's yeah. given a nice reward. Oh, he did so good. Good boy. Good boy.